es mi natal, a su salud, la cocaína is not good for you. from above and I'm Sebastian and I sing and play drums and this is Jesse and he plays bass and does some singing as well. And so what about the name? Where did the name come from? Uh, I was in an army surplus store with my sister looking at shirts and there was a shirt up on the wall it said Death from Above and I thought well that's a great band name and then the, the uh, crazy guy who ran the store offered up that's like the paratrooper motto. It started off as a, a beat on a drum machine and Jesse playing bass over top of it. Well, Femme Fatale, uh, it's like it's almost like it's two bands because the live band is so separate from the from the records. Like the records is just me making records. So you do all the recording and all the and all the playing on the records. The Femme Fatale record that's coming out uh, that just came out in Germany. That I guess maybe uh, Andy and Zoe just got it now. Sebastian played drums on that because we did it all in one session and I didn't want to play two records worth of songs on the drums all, all in a row and expect it to be any good. So I, Sebastian did the first record and I did the second record because we'd already been performing it for a while. But yeah, I have all the songs written for another record right now. I'm going to record it in January. It's called From the Abundance of the Heart the Mouth Speaks. It's also going to be on an eight records, right? Yeah. Compared to a lot of rock music, like music that our contemporaries, everyone's trying to like do things kind of weirder and we're doing everything so, so straight ahead. Do you find the Toronto climate in terms of the music scene is very responsive to that? It's hard to say because we haven't played that much locally. We live pretty like isolated, an isolated lifestyle. Like we're not that involved with local music or. We know our records are for sale in stores, but I've never gone into the stores to see them. Like the store that we're in right now, like we would never be in a store like this in our own city. Uh, I don't know. I, I think we're just musicians and they happen to make music that appeals to a certain amount of group of people and it's not like we're making music for you, we're just making music and you happen to like it. How was your trip here from Toronto today? It was, it was good. We, uh, Jesse watched Spy Kids too. And I can't believe that movie was made. I ate some chicken. Yeah. It was uh, it was uncomfortably bad. I thought it was pretty positive. I had a crossword puzzle and a French porno magazine. So I was alright. A French that. porno from the eighties. Yeah. And also I'd like to comment about how convenient it is that when you're sitting on a toilet in the plane, the sink is right near, because then you could practice the home bidet system. <laughs> you didn't do that. No comment. <laughs> do you guys plan on doing any other touring after you've done your West Coast tour here? Yeah. I think the lesson that we've learned with other bands in the past and whatnot is, for a long time, especially when I was younger, when punk bands would come out to play, they came out to play because people wanted to see them. I remember when Portraits of Past came to Toronto, it was a really big deal because this was a band that people liked already and we wanted to see that band. It was like, come to our city and so they came. Since, like, well that was in like 95, but like since about that time, it seems like the trend is, we're gonna go on tour and then people will wanna see us after they've seen us once. It's the whole supply and demand issue. And it's only in punk rock that that happens. So it feels like you're you forcing know. yourself on people sometimes. We'll tour when there's a demand for it. When people write to us and say, we want you to come play somewhere, then it, then it, I mean, it's obviously a good thing. Like, I mean, people want to want to see us here, so it seems. So that's why that's why we're here. The thing that's been happening with punk, and I think which sort of like killed it, is when every band goes on tour. Then it, it doesn't matter whether or not you're wanted. You're just going, and it's not a big deal anymore. It doesn't. It's not as uh, it's not as special. Oh, well, bands from out of town. Well, that doesn't mean shit anymore. You can be on a bill and have like four bands from out of town. And it doesn't it doesn't mean that they're good or that even anyone wants to see them. It just means that they wanted to, to play and you know maybe it makes for good stories but at the same but at the same time it also like kind of messes up the climate for other bands and it just changes your attitude towards touring bands. Do you guys have anything else you want to add? I don't know. I think that's pretty much it for me. <laughs> I just I basically like French porn. Um I really like uh collecting old orange furniture and like wood furniture and trying to uh, I'm always shopping for orange items or brown things. Yeah.